is quite literally the sticking point. The ramp does seem to be the problem. The team need to find a more permanent solution. And fast. More than five and a half thousand miles away in Phoenix, Arizona, another set of engineers are developing another essential safety system. The A380 needs 16 escape slides, each one custom built to meet stringent regulations. And that means a lot of work. Each slide is designed on computer. This is one of the most complex on the whole plane, the overwing slide. Today, it will be tested for real, a critical time for the engineers. This is a brand new slide. Um, it's fresh out of our prototype department, and it's never been deployed, it's never been uh, slid on, and the pressure is on. The slide fits in a small pack, which is mounted to a full-size mock-up of the plane. It allows passengers to get from a door here, across the wing to the ground, deploying almost as if by magic from here. Three, two, one! The regulations say that 850 passengers must be able to get out of an A380 in just 90 seconds. And the only way to prove that the slide is up to the job is to use real human beings. 40 people will take part in the test, and the first step is to get everybody warmed up. Everybody does it. Let's go. Let's do it. Come on. Ted Oney, who'll be running the test, is wearing a Ron special shirt. This is my lucky uh, Hawaiian shirt, of course. Every time I want to run an evac, I wear this shirt. So when people in the plant see me in this shirt, they know we're running an evacuation test. The aim of the test is to show the slide can hold up to the weight of the evacuees and allow a safe but speedy exit in an emergency. Our slide will have to have 40 people traverse down the slide in less than 17 seconds. That meets a rate, that meets our specified rate. So in the grand scheme of things, we'll be able to say that we could evacuate the entire airplane uh, within 90 seconds. Sliding can be dangerous, and part of Ted's job is to make sure nobody gets hurt. If you're evacuating an aircraft, you need to do it quickly, but I want you to do it safely, safely because your safety is a high on my concern list, okay? Remember, Getting out of that aircraft, it's in a hurry. All right, we're going to start in a minute, so put on your helmets, strap them down, let's rock and roll. We've gone through literally a year and a half worth of development test to get to this point. If it doesn't work today, then we've, we've got to go back and redesign the slide. This is what it's all about today. Okay, count down. Three, two, one, go. Come on, guys. Count the door. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Go. Go. Although some of the volunteers stumble, nobody gets hurt. It's always good to get the first one. <laughs> In these tests, the passenger's weight is the main consideration. So the engineers are allowed to use able-bodied volunteers. It's a good thing, because two hours of solid sliding are needed to prove the design. At the very end comes the most dangerous test of all. To simulate an evacuation in a rainstorm, the slide is sprayed with water. It's risky, because now everything is much more slippery than before. As the water puddles on the floor of the toe end of the slide here, um, it's, it means the landing surface is slick. People are used to uh, landing normally and suddenly it's much more slippery and uh, if we don't do our job right, we get a pile of bodies at the bottom. Go, 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 go! Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out! Go, 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 go! Come on, come on, come on, come on! Yeah! All right! All right! 
good. Yeah! All right, have a seat. Have a seat. Great job, everybody. Great job. Woo. I'm not doing that no more. <laughs> no way. I quit. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Evacuation levels. I'm very pleased. Yes. I'm happy with that. There was there wasn't a lot of bumping. Um, the slide did well. Now the team can turn to the other 15 slides needed for the world's biggest airliner. While it's to be hoped that the slides will never be used by passengers, there is one system that certainly will be, and it's being developed here in Hamburg, Germany. Laid out in this building is a full-size test rig of the waste system for the A380, with up to 20 toilets and around 3,000 feet of piping. It's a big job. Zenel Myrtle and Dennis Kaiser have been hard at work for the last two years. We will give you a short demonstration of a toilet flush on the A380. So at first we have to evacuate the toilet system. I can start this, it will get a little, little bit loud. The toilets work by pumping air out of waste tanks in the rear of the plane, causing a partial vacuum. When a toilet is flushed, air is sucked in to fill the vacuum, and the waste is drawn down pipes and into the tanks. In the finished aircraft, these parts are made of titanium to save weight. But here, Perspex is used for clarity. This is Formula One technology for toilets. And the result is some seriously speedy sewage. The speed um, of the piping is around 60 meters per second. 60 meters a second is about 130 miles an hour. Such high performance plumbing is needed because of the size of the plane. At 240 feet long, the loos at the front are a very long way from the tanks at the rear. This is the most forward toilet in the A380, the one what the pilots normally would use. It is quite difficult because you have, uh, you have a pressure loss from the waste tanks to this toilet because of the, of the length. It's a challenge not to be sniffed at, but undeterred, the guys give it a go. Ah, oh, well. Just seconds later, the waste arrives at the tank. And flushed with success, the engineers bring the A380 another step closer to reality. March 14th, 2005. And the A380 is parked outside the factory here in France. The customers for this plane are technically the test pilots who will fly it for the first time but there's still a lot of work to be done before it can be accepted. This is Charles Champion, the 48-year-old head of the entire £6 billion project. He's come to check on progress, something he tries to do at least once a week. Uh, we still have a lot to do. There is a lot of activity. So some of it is related to troubleshooting, and other related to uh, closing the area. But uh, we do have a lot of people uh, still working on the aircraft. The next day, the first customers turn up for a photo shoot. These are the six men who will fly the A380 for the first time. Between them, they have 176 years of test flight experience. And within minutes of the last shot being taken, they're in the plane, checking out the new machine. For flight test director, Fernando Alonso, it's important to feel comfortable at his post. This is the place where I will be sitting for the first flight, and it'll be, uh, it'll be almost my home for the next uh, month ahead, yeah. Using a bank of screens and readouts, Fernando will be able to monitor everything happening to the plane in real time. This screen, for example, it's what we call the flight display. So it shows us the uh, aircraft pitch attitude and bank angle. 
it shows us the speed, the angle of attack, the altitude, the heading. Then it gives us some information about the engines, of the configuration, flaps and slats, of the fuel quantities, of the autopilot engagement modes. So just by having a, a glance at that screen, we have a very good overall picture um, of the airplane. The aircraft is equipped with sophisticated flight instrumentation. Thousands of sensors that record every aspect of the plane's performance. Gathering this precious data is the primary purpose of the test flight program. If on the day of the first flight, the flight instrumentation does not work, we will not fly. But despite the seriousness of the task ahead, there's no doubt the A380 is beginning to generate a real buzz. It's really great to be here. We've been waiting for it so long, and, uh, and now it's, uh, we're almost there. March the 30th, 2005, and the prototype is in the hangar again, as engineers perform final tests. The flight controls are working, but one system still remains unproven. The last set of landing gear tests almost a month ago did not go well. While testing the emergency backup,